Hi Crafty Friends, welcome to today's instalment of Pigment Powders 101. Today we're going to be looking at stamping with pigment powders. These are the pigment powders that I have in my stash. Indigo Blue Luscious Powders, Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powders and Hunky Dory Prism Pearlescent Powders. But you use whatever you have available to you. So the first technique is somewhat similar to one of the stenciling techniques that I showed you in a previous episode. But this time instead of stenciling we're doing stamping. I'm not heat embossing right now but I am going to treat my paper with some anti-static powder. And I'm going to ink up my stamp. I've got a florally butterfly stamp here with embossing ink. And now I'm going to take some pigment powder. This is Luscious Powder Raspberry Jam and tap that over. And now some purple. Oops, that's quite a lot. And now I'm going to use this fan brush to gently sweep. Not pressing too hard. I don't want to disturb the embossing ink. Just gently sweep the colours over the embossing ink. And as you can see, hopefully, they have stuck to the paper. And I can, if I'm careful, just take a microfiber cloth. You could use maybe a Q-tip if uh, you want to get into the nooks and crannies. You can brush away any residual pigment. And there you have a lovely shimmery stamped image. And what I'd normally do now is give that a light misting with water to activate the binder in the luscious powder, not powder, not powder, uh, to make it bind to the paper. But unfortunately, I just dropped this on the floor and the top has snapped off. So now I can't spray anything. So that's technique number one, brush dried pigment powder over an image stamped with embossing ink. Now, I'm just going to see, this might be a disaster. I'm gonna pop that back in there and it should be in the right place. Get my embossing ink. This might not work at all. This might be a terrible mistake, but we will see. And press that down. And what that's done is that's picked up a little bit of the pigment powder and made this a bit lighter. But what I can now do is heat emboss that in clear embossing powder. And now the embossing powder has cooled and set really well. I can get rid of any extra pigment powder, brush that off. And now I've got a really pretty light pastel shimmery heat embossed image. So while we've got our heat embossing bits and bobs out, I'm going to do some emboss resist. You'll have seen me do this before if you watched the last video, but I think it's worth doing again in a video specifically about stamping and pigment powders. Whoops. So just gonna ink up my image again with embossing ink. And I'm going to sprinkle over white powder. You can use any embossing powder you like. This is super fine, whoops, detail embossing powder. And now that is cooled and set, I'll put some water on my mat, take some, let's do some magenta. This is the raspberry jam pigment powder and 
you can obviously you can ink blend over this you can smush over it you can swipe an ink pad over it or you can paint over it with paint that you've made from pigment powders and that has brought out that image really nicely and when that dries that magenta color is going to be beautifully shimmery just let it run and you can if you want to intensify the color in some areas you can always drop a bit more liquid a bit more paint in some areas for example the maybe the center of the flowers and also if you've got bits where you've got too much liquid you can just twizzle a bit of kitchen roll a bit of paper towel or tissue and mop it up right we'll leave that aside to dry so before we put away the heat embossing equipment i'm going to quickly show you another heat embossing with pigment powders technique now this had a whole video of its own earlier in the series. Do check that out if you want more detail. But this is a DIY embossing powder that I made with green luscious powder. So I put some clear embossing powder in here and then added a good dollop of green luscious powder. And now I've got my own green sparkly embossing powder. So now that's heated and dried, I can take a clean microfiber cloth, brush off any excess pigment, and we are good to go. So there we have a green sparkly heat embossed stamped image. And actually I've got one more technique involving heat embossing. So here we go again. But instead of stamping my image with embossing ink to start with anyway, I'm gonna stamp it with black ink. That looks pretty good to me. Wipe that off there. And then I'm gonna stamp it again with embossing ink. Dip it in clear embossing powder and heat it. So there we go. You don't have to heat emboss over the black image if you're using a waterproof black ink. But even if I'm using a waterproof black ink, I do like to clear emboss over the top because I think it really uh, helps that image pack a punch and you get a nice slightly dimensional shiny black stamped image and now for the pigment powders so I'm not going to paint the whole image because you really don't want to see me painting for ages but I've got some yellow and some pink prism pearlescent powders and I'll take a bit of the pink mix it in there to get a watercolour paint a shimmery watercolour paint and I can colour in I can paint my stamped image like you would with any uh, wet media you can use inks obviously or watercolour but this is a pigment powder video so we're using pigment powders to paint our stamped image so just going to give this flower a nice good coat and the good thing about heat embossing is it creates a bit of a barrier it's a physical barrier for the paint so it helps you keep it contained where you want it to be 
Uh, let's just get a bit of the yellow, mix it over here. It's very yellow. And we can drop some in. And because the flower, the pinkness of the flower is still wet, it will disperse. That's a wet in wet watercolour technique. Once the first coat of paint is dry, you can always go back in and add some more. Just paint with pigment powders exactly the same way as you'd paint with any other medium. And I could, where is the blue? There it is, I can make a green by mixing a bit of blue with a bit of the yellow maybe a bit more of the yellow there we go that's a very vibrant green it's a beautiful shimmery color And again, as I say, you can add darker colours to create shadows, depth, variation. This isn't my best colouring, I'm doing this really quickly. Just to give you an idea. Oh, I might do this butterflies here. Let's get a bit of that blue there and a bit of that pink and create a little purple and we'll just do the butterflies in that they're a bit dark but never mind and just to add a bit of energy we can do a little bit of splattering in the colors that we've used so i know i said i wasn't going to paint the whole thing but it looks like i have so there we go so we'll set that aside to dry and I'll take some close-up photos of it later so that you can see the shimmer on those flowers and leaves. Now something that we haven't done thus far is look at these pigment powders on dark paper or black paper. So I'm just going to press down on here, give it a good coating. In fact, what I might do is put some re inker on there and spread it about with a dauber so it's got a good coating on it and you can tell it's coated because it'll be nice and shiny and i'm going to take this is the warm wishes luscious powder and a teal luscious powder and just brush those over there to stick to the embossing ink get those spread out and you can see how those have come alive on that black background i haven't done a particularly elegant job of spreading those around but it will do now what i'm going to do is just pop this in here and i'm gonna get my stamp inked up again in embossing ink like that and then oh i hope you can see that the ink on the stamp has picked up the pigment powder that's on the paper and left a black image in amongst all that pretty luscious powder i'm just wondering if that will stamp onto some white card And that has 
stamped onto this piece of white card. It's very, very faint, but that would be lovely in the background of something. Now, if I had my mister ready, I would mist the air. You have to imagine that I'm misting the air and then wafting this paper through the mist. And then the water that lands on it will seal the pigment powder and mica to the paper. It will activate the binder. So to make a card then, I think the obvious card to do would be this one because it's pretty much done for me. So what I'm going to do is use this frame card to cut a frame and the inside. Now the frame is actually supposed to be separate from the main part there but actually I want it to stay together so I'm going to pop some tape on the back of that. What I do want to do is cut the word celebrate out of the middle and I want all the little bits from the insides and letters and gaps between the letters. So next I'm going to cut the word out of some gold foil cardstock but before I do I'm going to pop some craft foam on the back some sticky craft foam to give it some dimension so this is a four by six inch card blank with a slightly smaller panel on the front just want to get that central and now i can take my sticky foam to celebrate and pop that in the hole there Now I can stick the little bits back in. It might have looked a little bit neater and tidier if I'd have just stuck the gold straight on without die cutting the celebrate out, but the time I was thinking of doing an eclipse card and then changed my mind so we've got what we've got so I'm thinking I might add a white celebrate on top of the gold but I want it to be glossy because it's sitting on top of that shiny gold so I put some clear packing tape over there and I'm going to cut and I've got all the bits out my die so there we have that so I'm wondering about popping that on there, offset, so it brings this white paper forward, but we still get a bit of gold. So let me hold that down. So let me know what you think in the comments. Should I leave it gold or should I add it over there like that? Right, so that is this video done. I do hope you've enjoyed it and that you've picked up some hints and tips along the way. I think I've got either one or two more videos to do for this series. So do subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when those air. And I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.